So welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel and today we're doing a bit of a different uh, different topic almost. We're looking at a pistol. This is the new Reximex Mito with the Walnut Grip option. Now you can also get these in other models. There is a blue version with a blue uh, top or rail you could say. And there's also a red with an orange on the horizon. This is the Walnut model which I actually think is the best looking out of all of them. The other models, however, do also come with a buttstock, whereas the Walnut, unfortunately, at this moment in time, does not. But we're going to be reviewing this, as always. We're going to be looking for what features the pistol comes with, on top of consistency through the chronograph and shot count, and also performance downrange. So we're going to give it a good run through its paces. I just want to say a massive thanks to Range Right for sponsoring this review and sending us the pistol. However, as always, rest assured, this is most certainly not going to be a commercial review. We're still going to give our gods honest opinions about it. So let's move on with the review and see what features you get for your money. So features, what do you get for your money? Well, quite a lot actually, but not all of them are on the gun. And you'll see where I'm going with this in a moment. Starting off at the rear, you have got a lovely walnut grip with a lovely amount of stippling in there as well, which looks pretty deep, but we'll talk a bit more about that on the handling section. As we come up, you can see the pistol is a side lever action, unlike the PP700 and such, which are sort of like a hammer action pistol where you cock it from the rear. Slightly further up still, you can see there's a set of sights fitted. Now these are not windage adjustable. However, don't panic too much because you get a second set of sights with this gun, which are, as I'm sure you can see, windage adjustable. As we come up, you can see the rail that the sight is on is a dovetail style rail. However, as we pan across to the rest of the gun, you can see it uses the sort of Turkish style rail where it's a mixture of dovetail and weaver or picatinny whatever you have it's going to fit i actually really really like this design and i wish that more guns would come to come with it because it means basically no matter what mounts you're using it will fit on the gun simple as and slightly further along obviously you've got the front sight which we've left nice and loose and you can see there obviously how it adjusts and such like that pretty good so far but it does get better as we come back you have a two-stage adjustable trigger unit again that's a handling section thing and as we come up, you can see the safety here quite nicely placed just above and behind the trigger. Obviously, you can see at the minute it is safe. That little bar is not poking out to indicate that it's ready to fire. And obviously, this is a pre-charged pistol as well. However, what is interesting is that this pistol is also regulated. Now, you don't usually get that much Turkish gear, at least in the UK, that has a reg. So it'll be really interesting to see how that can do. One potential nitpick that I actually think we'll let it get away with is the fact the pressure gauge is on the business end of the gun. However, I have got to sort of give them some slack. At the end of the day, it's a pistol and you don't have that much real estate on there to put the gauge. Obviously, it'd be nice if it was put here or something like that, but it is what it is. I think we'll let them get away with it this time, but we're not done. Like I said, you get quite a few bits that aren't even attached to the gun. So as we come back, you do get this lovely case with it. You also get the two magazines. You get a single shot tray, which is probably realistically what you're gonna be using mainly with this gun. It is mainly a target pistol. You've got the accessory pack in here now. You can see the fill, fill probe and such like that. And as we come up, you can also see the targets that you get free with the gun. However, the best bit, and this is not just a Mito thing, this is a Reximex thing, you get a baseball cap. I like that. I think that's good. All free stuff you get with a gun is all right by me. I'll put it that way. I, that, that put a smile on my face when we first started seeing the Reximex caps come with the guns. But that's it for features. Next up, we'll see how heavy this little thing is when it's in the hand. So let's break out the scales and find out. So we're on the scales and she comes out at 1.94 pounds, which is not too bad at all, especially considering the big chunky walnut grip on the back. However, we need to see how it's balanced because a pistol like a rifle can feel like an absolute pig when you're trying to get it on aim if the balance is all over the place. So let's put it in the palm and find out. But first, let's take a close look at these mags. Right then, so let's take a look at this tiny little baby magazine and suss out how we load it. Well, it's actually pretty simple. As you can see, you've got the arrow here indicating which way you're gonna to wanna to spin the plate on top around to. So keep going like that until it's locked in position. And what you're going to want to do, and it can't go no further like that, is hold it in place with your finger and thumb. Put your middle finger, your saluting finger, shall we say, cover up the hole here. Stuff your first pellet through the top. And what that will do, as per a lot of the mags on this channel, it will basically lock that rubber, if you can see that sort of toggle in there, 
it'll lock that in the way so now you can load the mag straight through the top like so until basically you're done however there's also as we mentioned a single shot tray and obviously as you can imagine this is also really really simple to load once you've got your single shot tray imagine that's loaded into the gun simply take your pellet flop it in through the top so as it slides down in the position ready to go just like that and obviously when you close the uh, the side lever you can see it spat it out there then when you close the side lever it'll push that pellet straight into the breech so you're ready to rock and roll so that's it for loading the mags and the single shot tray let's put it in our palm now and see what we think okay so handling we're going to do this in a sort of first person style if we can so as you can hopefully see what it's like when you're holding your own meter so first things first we're going to want to load the mag now we've got the side lever back which you can also hold back with your thumb for a little extra safety measure which is quite nice and obviously as you hopefully can see the safety is off so load the mag from right to left you can see as it hopefully you can make out the light's dying a bit but there's a groove in the top of the mag that you simply load in from the right side like so and then push straight through like that silky smooth she's in close the side lever up and you're ready to rock and roll but first things first let's talk about how the pistol handles so what i'm going to mention that i really like and you probably knew this was coming on a target-esque sort of oriented pistol the grip is fantastic it really is you can see it's got this elongated tail up here the reason for that is because it helps the pistol almost the grip itself will almost stabilize the gun and that depending on how it's held can you sort of see how the top almost knuckle of my thumb is resting in here and it's cradling the pistol. The same goes for the bottom of the grip. If you look, my palm is resting straight in there and it's almost stabilizing the entire gun. The other neat feature for this is that these sort of pistols are nose heavy. The Mito is the same. There's no magic going on to stop that from happening, except the grip, which is causing, like we said, the pistol to sort of stabilize itself. If you can see that, it's not really going anywhere. So let's try and take aim now. We are using the standard sights. These aren't the adjustable jobbies, so I don't know if this is going to be on target. Obviously, the target section comes in a bit later. So safety off. Just push that through from the other side like that. And let's have a little play with it. So let's go, if you can hopefully see that. Let me change the camera a bit so you can. Okay, so I'm looking through the camera to aim a little bit. So this is probably not going to work. Let's see if we can get that puddle. Oh, we did. Well, we killed the puddle. Don't be wrong, it's not the most impressive target on the planet. It's, well, it's about seven yards away, but we hit the puddle. Main thing we're testing is the trigger. The trigger at the, out the box, at least, or case, is more of a single stage unit than a two stage. Now, it is adjustable. Hopefully, you might be able to see it's poor light, though. Back there, there's a adjustment screw behind the blade, so you can turn that more into a two stage if you want. Let's give that another go. The side lever is quite nice and smooth to use. We are we do have super fields in here at the minute, which are a hard skirted pellet, which is probably what's causing the kick before it closes closes up. So let's give that another go. Let's have a look at what do we have a go at? There's a leaf. There's a leaf over there. Hopefully, let me just sort you out a little bit. If you can see that, I'm going to try and murder this leaf. Let's have a go. Oh my God, we did. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad is it first time on camera yeah so we know she's kind of accurate at this moment in time it'll kill a leaf size target that is a really impressive little pistol let me just sort you out a little bit because you're sort of popping up and down and all sorts that is a really really nice little pistol and again someone who's at this moment in time we need to test it a bit further still but for someone who's looking for their next sort of thing that's a little bit funkier you can use it as a target gun and such this is definitely, I think it's worth looking at, at the bare minimum. But it's not really a whole lot of good if through the chrono it's absolutely crap. And like we said, we do have a regulator on here, which you don't usually get on a Turkish gun, at least not most of them. So it's going to be really interesting to see what this little thing can do. So on that subject, let's move on to chronograph testing. Okay, so the pistol has been filled up now, roughly to 245-ish bar, if you can see that on there. We're going to be using the RWS Superfill pellet straight from the tin. These are 8.4 grains. And as always, the camera is going to be facing into the phone where you're going to get a live report as to what we're getting with the gun. Now, as always, we're looking for power, consistency, and total shot count, which will be interesting with the little regulator that these come with. So, let's see what the little Mito can do.
So that's consistency testing over and done with. The pistol did extremely well. I think we're all going to agree on that. Power wise, she's absolutely spot on. She's above five feet pounds throughout pretty much the entire shot string until it starts giving up. Don't think there's any complaints there. Consistency wise, also perfect. This thing has outperformed pretty much most rifles that we've put through this chrono, I'll put it that way. Uh, spread 15 FPS. Standard deviation was roughly around 3 FPS per shot, which is pretty extraordinary considering people would still call this a budget pistol. Um, overall, it's been a superb bit of kit through the chrono. Uh, shot count wise is also really good. We've got 85 full power shots through there. Regulator bleeds off at about 105 bar, which is also pretty much superb and nice to see as well for a UK spec pistol. Most of the gear we get over here is choked down to meet our power levels and the chronograph, the, not the chronograph, the regulator on board is still running about 150 bar something like that 130 150 bar which is a bit too high but it's really nice to see that um, this has been i'd imagine genuinely designed for the uk so spot on there and you can see it on the um, shot count what you're getting with this it bleeds off when it should just over 100 bar 10 out of 10 so consistency wise i'm a very very happy chappy next up we need to put some targets up and see what it can do down range let's have a bit of fun Okay, so accuracy testing time. The pistol has been refilled up to 250 bar. We have the pellets on test, which are the HN Sniper Lights, the Norma Golden Trophy Heavy FTs, the Ely 10Xs, and the JSB Lead Threes. Now, the reason why we're using the Lead Free JSBs is simply because we've actually had some really, really good results out of those in the higher, well, not higher power, but UK power rifles. Um, one of my own PCPs actually pretty much stacks pellets one on top of the other with them. So hopefully they should pay dividends in this with a lower weight at the ranges we're shooting at. Hopefully it shouldn't have too much of an effect. Now if I can, I'd like to do it so as you can see me shooting in real time. So we've got the hat here with the camera mount on there as well. I'm going to try and rig that up. and Or we'll, we'll try and do it the way we did it before. It's a bit uncomfortable where you was basically down my coat, so to speak. The target is set up at 10 meters, as you can see there on the second staunchion of the barn, and it is a multi-target target, shall we say. As you can see here, there's five targets on the card. And what we're gonna do is use each target individually for each different type of pellet that we're using. So, this could be painful. I don't shoot pistols that much, and I don't freestand shoot full stop. So, this could be very uh, enlightening, I'll put it that way, and humbling, but, Let's see what the Mito can do. Okay, so it's accuracy testing time. The camera is on top of my head, as I'm sure you can see. So you can see hopefully exactly what I'm looking at and roughly how we're taking aim with the gun. We're gonna be using five shots of each brand of pellet, as you can hopefully just about make out on the table there. And we're gonna be starting with the Ely 10X. Now I'm using the table leg, you probably can't see it, but the table leg is my mark to not go in front of it or else we will be cheating. So I'm gonna get myself back just a tiny little bit, load the first pellet and see how we do. First pellet we're gonna be using are the Ely 10Xs and we're gonna be shooting at the top right target card. So, or target I should say, so let's give it a go. Take these off. Of course, the other problem that we have is that this is a rare sunny day of a uh, British November time, and it's shining directly onto the target card, slightly blinding me. So that always helps. quite blinding at the minute. Now I'll just give it two seconds. Yeah, that's a bit better. Two more shots.
and one left. And next up we're going to be using the Norma Heavy FTs. And we're going to be aiming at the top left target. Actually, no. We're going to be aiming at the middle target card. Gives it a fair old smack, must be said. That's our middle again. And one more. Apologies if I'm not as chatty as I usually am while I'm doing this. I'm 100% in concentration mode. Trust me, I need all the help I can get in regards to pistols. And next up we have the sniper lights. So we've gone from about 8 grain with the Ely 10X to 9.1 with the normas. Now we're going back the other way with the sniper lights, which off memory are, I believe, are about 7.4. So this could be fun. And with these, we're going to go bottom left. So that one went just to the right of the black target. Shot number two. Number five, I think I can already see from here to be fair that it does not like sniper lights, but hey ho. And next up we have the JSB lead free. So again, now we've gone from 7.4 to I believe 6.7 it says on the tin. And we're going to go top left. I think that just hit the staunchion. I mean, even if they don't shoot that great from an aesthetic point of view, as stupid as it sounds, the JSB lead freeze are a great looking pellet at least. more. 
Let's go take a look. Safety's on. Let's have a little mooch up to the target and see what we can see. Now that is looking interesting. So the lead-free JSBs, you can... That's really strange. It's as though it's gone through, if you can see that, gone through here. And you've sort of got that... If that lines up with, if you can see that, that hole there, it's almost gone through, hit something and bounced back this way. That is so strange. But overall, it's almost impossible to tell what groups we have. Um, these are the Normas, which are a little bit all over the place. Got one in the bull though, if that means anything. Uh, the rest of them are God knows where they're going, but the JSB lead freeze do have a very, very large amount of potential there. I mean, God knows. My God. And you see the rifling in the skirt. If you can make that out on camera. That is really odd. But overall, it looks like JSB lead free is definitely the way to go. Anyways, let's go back to the table and see what we think. Okay, so accuracy test results. What do we think? Well, the least favoured pellet was the sniper lights. I believe we was aiming down here off memory with the sniper lights and they went pretty much all over the place. We have, that's actually an Ely there, but we have one win in the ball, which is interesting as we wasn't aiming there. You can see this sort of a slash mark. The HN sniper lights seem to be tumbling. In fact, if we go down here, you can see there's another tear there. I think that's actually a Norma, but the rest of them just blatantly missed. The Normas did pretty damn well, actually. That's, I believe, you can make out there, that's a three-shot cluster in there, and we've got one high, one slightly low. Obviously, five pence piece there. Pretty good. Obviously, two of the shots did miss. Realistically, I know this sounds like a cop-out, but I think it is me, not the gun. I am not a pistol shooter. Slightly further up, though, we have the Ely's, which it did all right. Maybe with someone who actually knows what they're doing with a pistol could do a hell of a lot better group. In fact, I know they could than that, but definitely not. The star on show i'll put it that way but up here we have the jsbs which were absolutely phenomenal now we had one pellet that came looked like it was coming back at us now i am quite confident i didn't accidentally load that skirt first but unless it did you could see there was a groove in the wood where maybe it's gone through and then somehow it's came back maybe it's clipped something and come back i don't know but we've got one pellet up here and obviously that was jsb because you can see in the footage it's blatantly poking out and we've got, it to me looks like three shots, but it doesn't explain where the other shot went, unless we went blatantly off card, which maybe it would mean that realistically there could actually be four in there. And we've got maybe that one, maybe it tumbled as it was loaded and reversed itself, I don't know, which went through there back to front. But either way, I don't think anyone's going to be complaining about that, even if one of them did miss. That is not bad at all, especially with someone like me shooting. And again, that is at the 10 meter mark, which most, most pistols are shot at. And with the standard sights, I didn't even change for the uh, adjustable sight on there either, because during our testing off camera, it was more or less on target anyway. So why tamper with it? But that's it for accuracy testing. I'm a very, very happy bunny. Let's move on now to the final verdict and see what we really think of the Reximex Mito. Okay, so final verdict of the Reximex Mito. What do we think? It's a stonking little gun. It's got to be said. I can see now why they've be well. They've become incredibly popular, even though they've not long been out. It's because it's a stonking, well-made little piece of kit. From a handling perspective, the grip is really nicely made, and you can see it's been designed with a purpose as well. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Bear in mind, I don't shoot pistols, but even in the video, I can hold it pretty damn still. And I am, like I said, I'm not a pistol shooter at all. The trigger on it is nice. It's more of a single stage out the box, but with it, you can feel it definitely, it heavies up as you're pulling and you can feel when it is gonna break, but you can adjust that. It is a genuine adjustable unit, so you can lighten it. You can make it more of a two stage if you want, you name it. It's got a regulator as standard, which is a massive plus for this particular type of pistol. And the regulator is very good. If we come down here, you can see the consistency results once again. Hopefully that comes through okay. We actually, obviously we shot it off until it bled off, so the spread's reading 29 and the standard deviation's 494. Throughout that shot string, it bled off at the 85th shot, more or less. Hopefully you can see that. And throughout the shot string, we, string, we actually had a spread of 15, not 29. And the spread of 15 through 85 shots will put a smile on pretty much anybody's face. So there's definitely not gonna be any complaints there, I don't think. Accuracy-wise, things are very impressive. Now, 
It didn't like all the pellets we shot. The sniper lights went all over the place, as you can see. We have one in the bull as well. Really didn't like them. However, that being said, the JSB Exact RS, not RS, sorry, the lead-free JSBs shot beautifully. There's Even if that's only four shots and the other one went AWOL, you can see there it fits under a 20 pence piece, except it's getting snagged at the minute. There we go. It fits under a 20 pence piece. Not bad considering, like I said, I, I don't shoot pistols or anything like that, and it's a pretty much out-of-the-box gun. And the Normas did really well as well. We had two flyers, but you've got three in a tight cluster there. So this is what I mean. With someone shooting the gun that knows what they're doing, this gun could work absolute miracles downrange with, in regards to the groupings that you could get. The other nice feature with it, obviously it comes with a box, and it's, or a case I should say, and it is a genuinely nice case. You've got the case, you've got two mags. Obviously we use the single shot tray for most of our shooting today, but it's nice that you do get the mags there as well. Power is good, like we said, consistency is good, and it comes with a hat. You can't ask for any more than that. Does Daystate give you a hat? Actually, they might give you a hat, I'm not sure. But you get a hat, you get the point that I'm making. It's a genuinely nice bit of kit. And obviously you can get these in other colors as well. Red, blue, I believe there's orange coming out, or the standard black. And the synthetic models and the red and blue also come with the buttstock as well, turning it into a handy little carbine pistol slash rifle. Uh, but overall, it's a great little gun. Even the rail system is quite clever. So if you look at the back, you've got dovetail there and you've got a more Turkish sort of design rail on the front here where you can put a weaver or dovetail mount on there and you're ready to rock and roll. One thing we didn't mention that we should have done was that uh, it also has a half inch UNF thread adapter. So if you want to silence it, you put the adapter in the front end. You won't see it here because the camera angle is a bit awkward and the light's getting low, but that is threaded in there. And you can put a silencer on there as well to either keep the neighbors happy or this might be controversial, but you could genuinely use this for very, very close range pest control. It's got the accuracy, it's got the power. And doing something indoors, if you've got a rat problem, something like that, up to say maybe 10 yards, something like that, you will dispatch them. Simple as, but don't go much further. Um, overall, I'm a very, very happy chappy. I don't think there's gonna be any complaints when it comes to people taking a look at the meter, I'll put it that way. But thanks ever so much for watching. I'm sorry there's been a slight delay with our next video as per usual. The weather's been awful and basically we just haven't had a great deal of luck. But fingers crossed we should hit the ground running again very soon and we'll have the next review up and running as soon as we can. So thanks for watching and as always, take care.